In this first part of the three-part series I'm doing, I'm going to be sharing with you online tools that can help your middle and high school homeschoolers um, take ownership of their learning and become more independent of you. This helps or is important because when you have multiple children at multiple ages, being able to have children that can work independently of you is very important. So in this first video, I'm going to be sharing with you a walkthrough of Google Classroom and how it can be used as an online tool for your kids. So stay tuned. Okay, so we are here in Google Classroom. Um, I've accessed Google Classroom with this um, Google Apps toolbar that I can click on and it'll take me all the way down to my Google Classroom app. And this is the screen that you will see. So I'm going to walk you through um, Google Classroom using a Heart for Homeschool, which is me and my older girls. Um, little classroom setup. So notice that when you first enter the classroom or the classroom screen for Google Classroom, you see the different classes you have set up. So for example, I have a Heart for Homeschool, which is the classroom I use for my homeschool girls. And then here is Chem Life 101, which is my self-paced chemistry course um, that I actually have set up through Teachable, but I have the classes organized for my daughter who took chemistry this year. If you're interested um, in Chem Life 101, which is a self paced chemistry course through Teachable, um, I can put the links for that down below. So here is the a Heart for Homeschool classroom, which is the what I've set up for my two daughters. Um, you'll notice that when you first come into the classroom, you can see what assignments are due today. And so this is a really nice feature because your kids can immediately see, hey, I need to work on my interactive notebook and I need to read X, Y, Z. OK, and so I'm going to click on the classroom to enter it. Um, notice you have at the top here, you have a class code. This is how your you can add your children. You can either email them, which I will show you in a little bit or you can email them the class code, which will allow them to enter the classroom. And you can always change that code if necessary. So I don't know why I have a, <laughs> a pool table background, but I can change the theme or upload a photo, which I will have to do. Um, notice on the left hand side here that again, you can see your child can see which assignments are due for the week and they can expand it to view all of the assignments. And Google Classroom is a learning management system. So on the first tab, so there's four tabs, there's a stream tab, there's the classwork tab, the people tab and the grades tab. And on this stream tab, which is the one we're on, um, you can give directions. So you can write directions, you can add things. Your kids can see that you have uploaded files or assignments and whatnot. And instead of having to email them individually or work through email, you have a stream where you can post directions or information one time and you're done. And this is also good if you have a homeschool co-op or a homeschool co-op class and you're dealing with multiple students and you don't want to have to constantly send out emails which can get lost or end up in spam. So now before we go to the classwork tab, I'm going to show you the people tab. So for example, here I'm the teacher and you can actually add or invite other teachers or people. So again, if you have a homeschool co-op class or an assistant or whatnot, um, you can add them and then you can add students here. And what's so great about the students is you can click on them and you can access an email. 
So you can e email them if you need to or whatnot. So I don't have to email my daughter so much because they're right in the house with me. But again, this is a great tool if you have multiple students from a homeschool co-op class. Also, a nice feature that was added not too long ago with Google Classroom was the Grades tab. So notice that they have a listing of all the assignments with their due dates. Um, and when they turn in assignments, you can see that if you want to assign grades, um, you can do so. And what happens is when they turn those assignments in and whatnot, they you can grade them, you can send their grade to them, and then it will populate in this grade book. Now, again, I have used this when I've had, um, like, chemistry, for example. I don't use this so much for homeschool, but it's there if you need it. Now, we're going to go over here to the classwork tab. Now, notice that to the far left here, um, are all the topics so I've used Google Classroom um, for like as a book club so to kill a mockingbird we've done that we've done Animal Farm um, and we've also done a number of other books we just did not do them um, with Google Classroom but these are two that we did do and I just found it really useful currently we are working on the 1619 project I will do another video specifically on my review of that, but right now we're working through it. So I was able to, for example, go and add the entire PDF issue of the 1619 project as material for my kids to work through or read through. And then there's also a podcast episode. And so I can just add the podcast as well. And let's view the assignment. So, for example, here, so the Flipgrid assignment. So, notice that we can view the assignment, and I can, it, there's a student work tab, and there's an instructions tab. So, Flipgrid is something that I will go over short in another video, but I can assign point values to it, I can assign a due date. I can type directions in and I can link um, Flipgrid, the actual assignment within Flipgrid, to, to Google Classroom so that it's easily accessed by my girls. And then there's class comments that they can add. Now, in terms of student work, notice that they have not turned it in. It's because they have done the videos within Flipgrid but this is a way of being able to make sure that they can access the link to Flipgrid and have it all in one centralized place. What I love about Google Classroom is Google Suite. So, for example, um, I created a digital interactive notebook for my daughters to work through. And basically, they can make their own copy or have Google Classroom can set it up where you create a copy, and I'll show you how to do that in a second. And they can actually um, work through the Google Slides. And I want to just create an assignment so that you can see how it's done. So here I can go up to Create. Now I can create an assignment. I can um, create a quiz assignment. I can assign just material that maybe they will use over and over, or I can create a new topic. So let's say we finish the 1619 project and I want to go and have them to start studying the 1776 campaign, which is kind of um, the antithesis of the 1619 project. Well, I can create it as a topic and they can and begin assigning materials or whatnot. So let's create an assignment so you can see how easy it is. And let's say the change, change migration, which is the second portion of um, the 1619 project. I'm just going to type in the title and I'm going to just say blank assignment. Notice I can 
um, put in instructions. So this is just a blank assignment. Please disregard. Disregard. Man, my spelling. Okay, and so if I want to assign it to just one student, I have that oper that option, um, or I can assign it to everyone. If I want to assign points to the assignment, I can do that, or I can leave it as ungraded. I can set a due date. So here I can not only set the day in which it's due, let's say tomorrow, but I can also set a time. I can say that it's due by, I don't know, 5 p.m. And then um, I can either create a topic. Let's say this is a completely new topic. Um, let's say it's the 1776 campaign, okay? So I'll say 1776 campaign. So I have a topic created. Now, notice also that I can add a rubric. I can create a rubric or I can import a rubric from Google Sheets. I'm not going to do that, but you have that option so that a rubric is a guide for grading. It also helps your students or your kids rather to know what is expected or what you're looking for in terms of a completed assignment. And it helps you to more easily grade said assignment. Okay, so I can now add, let's say for change migration, um, I want to add a YouTube video. I can either um, search YouTube or I can add the URL if I know it. And let's say I want to um, add a file from my computer. I can also upload it that way. Um, and then also, if I want to upload something from my Google Drive that I want to share with them, I can also do it that way as well. So notice I can either add it as a file or I can add it through Google Drive. Um, here I have the 1619 Project. Um, let's see, I have a chained migration template, so I can just add it here and insert, and there you have it. Now here, before I assign the class or assign the assignment, I have some options. I can say students can view file, students can edit file or make a copy for each student. I tend to like to make a copy for each student because in that way they don't overwrite your master copy and they can work on uh, what you have assigned themselves and make edits and there's no problems. And so when you first assign a, an assignment, you will have the option to make a copy for each student. If you have to go back and edit that assignment, you won't necessarily have that option. You will either be able to allow them to edit the file or view the file only. Okay, and so now that I have everything set, I have my due date. It's an ungraded assignment going to everyone and I have a new topic and I have all the files that I want and the instructions and title, I can press to my right here and say assign. And so it's taking a minute, but it is assigning the topic. Okay, and so notice that it's a new topic, so it ends up as a separate tab in classwork. And then notice that it also ends up, the topic ends up as a topic on my left and then you can see the assignment the title of the assignment as well so it's really nice it really helps you and your kids to stay organized with assignments and if they have questions they can um, ask you those questions they can actually email you within Google Classroom and this is nice in case you are really engaged or having to work with your little ones and they don't have a pressing question, but they do have one. You can see it, okay? And then notice here that there is Google Calendar. So you all have access to Google Calendar, and they can see what assignments are due when. This is another way of them tracking what is due, and this is very helpful because um, it helps them to manage their time. 
and then the class drive folder so this is um, basically a folder that contains all of the work all of the PDFs all of the files that have been used in the class so um, I just clicked on the little settings toolbar this is where you can change the class name you can give it a topic you can access the class code um, and you can set what you will allow within Google Classroom okay so this is for settings so hopefully you can see some of the benefits and some of the possibilities for your older students when when they get to a place where they are able to utilize the internet and other resources Google Classroom is an online learning management system that helps them and you to keep track of assignments keep track of due dates keep track of files and also help you to go paperless because this app is available on your phone it's available on your iPad and you can literally in the evenings once your kids have turned in assignments if you have an Apple pen you can actually go in and write on their assignments provide comments and it's just really really nice and it gives homeschoolers who may not always be um, have been a part of um, in-person classes in a traditional classroom it gives them an opportunity to learn how to manage their time learn how to turn in assignments electronically um, how to use other online tools I love Google Classroom my girls and I have used it we will continue to use it we're in the middle of using it for the 1619 project and I absolutely love it don't forget to click like and subscribe to be notified of future videos. Also, don't forget to check out my website, www.aheartforhomeschool.com.